FBI's decision to open an inquiry into Hillary Clinton again capped a week of very bad press for the Democratic nominee. New disclosures by WikiLeaks showing that Chelsea Clinton complained about her father's aides cashing in on the Clinton Foundation and, she said, taking away money from her parents. When the scandal over Hillary's private server erupted last year, campaign manager John Podesta said some of her loyalists weren't forthcoming with the facts. Longtime advisor Neera Tandon wrote that they wanted to get away with it. And as for Clinton, her instincts can be terrible. Then came James Comey's letter to Capitol Hill, and both candidates reacted with Hillary Clinton holding a brief news conference. Hillary Clinton's corruption is on a scale we have never seen before. We must not let her take her criminal scheme into the Oval Office. Have you spoken to Huma? Was she able to give you any information about that? You know, we've heard these rumors. We don't know what to believe, and I'm sure there will be even more rumors. That's why it is incumbent upon the FBI to tell us. In fact, it's not just strange, it's unprecedented, and it is deeply troubling. Joining us now to analyze the campaign coverage, Aaron McPike, a political commentator and former reporter for Real Clear Politics. Kelly Riddell, deputy opinion editor of The Washington Times. And Ruth Marcus, deputy editorial page editor and columnist for The Washington Post. Aaron McPike, the FBI launching this inquiry, not reopening the investigation as NBC, Washington Post, Politico, and others originally reported and then retracted. It's obviously a bombshell story, but given that we don't know what's in these emails, should journalists be treating it as a nuclear bomb? Well, I do think that when it broke on Friday, the media covered it breathlessly, as they should have, because we didn't know what it was going to look like. And I think in the days that followed, they've taken a step back and said, okay, we need to actually get our facts straight on this. But I think it was, it was appropriately covered on Friday, for sure, uh, as the, the bombshell that it was. To that point, Kelly Riddell, here's yesterday's New York Times front page, the entire top half. You can see here three different stories about the FBI issue. Uh, so obviously it's a big story, but now the Clinton campaign, I, the press got an email saying, Media breathtakingly cover latest uh, supposed Clinton scandal, but when the facts come out, it fizzles. Your take on that line of argument? It, my take on it, if it was a GOP nominee, they'd still be all over this. They would, there wouldn't be any questions about the DOJ the press, and its integrity. They, the press? Yeah, the press. The press. There would you be don't no think there'd be a single question about what James Comey did? Uh, you know what? I don't believe so. Not in the not not the way they're covering it right now. I mean, the Clinton campaign clearly wants to discredit James Comey. They've put out their machine today and all of the Sunday shows. Um, the fact of the matter is, is we don't know the facts of the matter. So um, we all have to stay tuned. They cannot uh, they cannot say that they want the the FBI to be so transparent and put everything out there when they have really delayed this investigation from the very beginning and have been anything but transparent. And that's the Clinton. That's Clinton's team. Ruth Marcus, uh, Yahoo's Mike Isikoff reports that the FBI doesn't even know what is in these emails that were lit on the devices of Huma Abedin and her estranged husband, Anthony Weiner, because the Bureau, as of last night, hadn't even gotten a search warrant. So is it possible that all of this coverage, and I'm not calling with the coverage, I mean, this is an explosion in the last two weeks, ends up being, possibly ends up being about something that's not that serious. Um, yes, it's absolutely possible. And, you know, it's really a remarkable moment because one minute, depending on what side of the political spectrum you're on, Jim Comey is a hero. Um, the next minute, he's a, a fool, and then vice versa. Either the media is shilling for him by endorsing his decision not to prosecute Hillary Clinton, or they're uh, attacking him. I mean, it just it goes so many different ways. And look, this is a Donald Rumsfeld moment. There's a lot of um, known unknowns here. And we have the combination of this sort of soap opera of a presidential campaign and this speeded up media cycle where we have to react instantly. It was imperative for the media to react to this. It's also imperative for us to then um, kind of pull the lens back and figure out what we know and don't know here. Well, let me ask you to react to that because it does kind of reek of hypocrisy. You have a lot of conservative commentators. You have Donald Trump himself um, blasting Comey's decision not to pursue criminal charges in the original case, and now you're praising him as this fine public servant. Um, partisan? 
It's partisan, but that's politics, <laughs> right? The media doesn't have a responsibility, has a responsibility to cover this truthfully and honestly. And right now, it just seems like they're just taking the Clinton line that this is all rigged and that the DOJ is in for it for themselves. And you know what? They attacked, they attacked Donald Trump on those same lines for saying that, oh, the, the election could be rigged, how that's a threat to democracy, yet they're running headlines today, the DOJ could be a threat to but, democracy. Now, that is, that's, hypo that's the hypocritical. No, I, I don't speak for the news side of the paper. I speak for the opinion side of the paper. But I'm a little bit confused about how we could simultaneously be accusing the media of overhyping this and responding breathlessly and perhaps over exaggerating the import of this uh, Comey letter and the consequence. And uh, which, if they were in the tank for Hillary Clinton, they would be downplaying it. So it's a little bit confusing, your argument here. Well, let me just get to the flip side, which is you've got lots of liberal commentators and opinion folks who said James Cohen is the paragon of integrity he handled in the original investigation so perfectly. And now he's a former Bush administration Republican hack who's unfairly tilting the election. Yeah, I think I saw a lot of this from the media actually on Friday afternoon that he was kind of damned if he did, damned if he didn't, either way. Um, I don't think, he's just a little pawn in this whole story. Ooh, he's not a pawn, he's the director of the FBI. He's he a major is, actor. He is a major actor, but this is, he is one character in a huge story. Okay. And I think that, that we had to cover this in every way. And yes, he made a decision, and he made a decision again, and maybe his decisions were wrong, but he had to do what he had to do. Right. I mean, he is at this point the absolute leading character of this story. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. This is right. where other you're wrong. Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Clinton. Hillary Clinton, Clinton is the leading factor. No, other than the fact that it originated with her. Other than the two protagonists, <laughs> the Republican nominee and the Democratic nominee, I, and I think that one of the things that's really important to do, and I'm going to just flack my own newspaper here, take a look at WashingtonPost.com. There's a very powerful op-ed by a former Democratic Deputy Attorney General and Republican Deputy that's a Attorney never, that's General. A that's a never he Trumper. He is a never so, Trumper. So that's fully, not exactly fully unbiased. Disclosed who have both spent a lot of time in the Justice Department supervising FBI investigations, who are appalled by this. Were they, they appalled? The did they write an op-ed when, when Bill yet, Clinton and Loretta Lynch met on the tarmac I, I, about how disgusted I, and appalled I they were about that? Them, but I well, think I think that then that's a double people, standard. No, it's not a double standard. Yes, it is. No. And you know, then so and you don't know, so you're not going to investigate what went on in that 39-minute meeting. Well, certainly, you know, the media that covered that. that. The that media did. Conflict, no, I don't know about these two individuals. The media covered that extensively. Let me just pull back the camera just a moment. How bizarre is it that Anthony Weiner, who's sexting a girl who said she was 15, and the FBI investigation of that, and of course he's married to Huma Abedin, and that drags Hillary Clinton into the FBI dragnet. I mean, if you wrote this as a Hollywood script, it would be rejected as just outlandish. How bizarre is it that, that the Weiner angle is now, you know, brought us to where we are? Well, I, I think it's totally bizarre. You know, and, and that's kind of something that Hillary Clinton has to deal with. But look at the, the people she keeps around her. I think this is a thing that we need to look at more closely going into the last couple weeks of the election, the last 10 days, nine days. And then if she is elected, the people, the council that she keeps, this is a big problem. She seems to have this very insular circle and she can't seem to get rid of the people who are causing her trouble. There are a lot of examples of that. Let me turn to WikiLeaks, which I thought was a very damaging story, a couple of days of disclosures. Uh, for example, I'm not, I don't have time to put it up on the screen, but Neera Tandon is a co-chairperson of her transition team saying, uh, who actually told Hillary she could use a private email, the whole thing is blanking insane. This was, and the Clinton Foundation stuff, the lead story one day in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Above the Fold, led to CBS Evening News, led to NBC Nightly News. Why do you think it's breaking through where the earlier WikiLeaks stuff did not? Because there was a memo by Doug Band that said, quite specifically... Doug Band, long-time Bill Clinton long confidant. Bill, and yeah, Clinton, how, 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 yeah. They, how they used the charity to enrich President uh, he, Clinton. Here's the so thing. That, was, that was the bombshell there. Yeah, it was, but, but people seem, seem to think that this just came out. In the fall of 2013, the New Republic did a cover story called Clinton Inc. A first-rate investigative reporter by the name of Alec McGillis wrote this story. Okay, this is not a new thing. And in fact, Juliana Goldman at CBS has done many stories about the Clinton Foundation and its entanglements. It's taken this scandal to really right. make it yeah. into the public. But what is new here is that you have the, the inner circle of Hillary Clinton in the private memos, which were hacked emails that we never should have seen, but nevertheless, you know, criticizing her and the people around her and her husband, including Chelsea Clinton, for their handling. But Ruth, you wrote today in the Washington Post that Clinton's unseemly money chase is repulsive, talking about all the dealings 
around the foundation. And doesn't this play into a media narrative that the Clintons skirt ethical rules, that they're obsessed with making money, they're too close to big donors and corporations and all that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it, yes, it does. And, you know, it's perfectly possible to both um, have a view about um, Donald Trump's fitness to be president, to have a view about Hillary Clinton's Clinton's fitness to be president and to say with all honesty that there are aspects of her behavior and character and aspects of Bill Clinton's behavior and character um, that are a mark against them and that's my piece this in this morning's paper basically argues that we the best thing for Bill Clinton to do as first gentleman if he gets there is to fade from the scene uh, just go away well we'll see if that yeah, happens kind of yeah. hard to imagine all right let's